Okay, uh, in the last video, we discussed some of the uh, uh, initial properties of image blurring. And if you remember, we, we took an example of a 4x4 image and we took a 3x3 averaging mask or filter or window um, and we slide over this input image and generated an output image. Um, and if you remember, what we did is we placed that, we placed the center of the window at a particular pixel and we surround that uh, pixel by a 3x3 window and then we take average of that uh, window and place the average at, at the same location where the center was placed in the input image. And then we slide that center everywhere at every pixel and there we generate the uh, blurred image. Another um, way of seeing the same thing is the following. Let's say again we have the same input image like before. We have, let's say, the same input image. One, two, three. And now uh, we have, let's say, the same intensities as before. Let me just copy the, the same intensities. Two, one, three, one, one, two, one, six, one, zero, five, six, and one, one, seven, four. And we have an output image, which is again four by four, like before. Um, yes. But now, rather than thinking of this 3x3 three three window, we actually design a 3x3 three three window. We actually write a 3x3 three three window and place some numbers in that window. Or this window is also called a mask or sometimes called a, a filter. I mean, there are several names. Let me place the numbers one by nine and I will show shortly why I'm placing this number one over nine everywhere. 1 over 9, 1 over 9, and 1 over 9. So this is a 3 by 3 matrix with all the numbers as 1 over 9. What I now do is, uh, and, and let's designate a particular value as a center of the window. So let's say this is the center of the window that I denoted as a red dot. Now if I place the, this window on, let's say, this particular location, now what will happen is, um, this, this window will coincide with this particular uh, image and the following values will be coinciding. So one over nine will coincide with two, one over nine will coincide with three, one, one over nine will coincide with three, and these values will coincide. And now if I take just the dot product of the coinciding values together, which means if I just multiply the filter values and the image values, and I add all these products together, what will happen is the following. Uh, so, so the result will be here, I'm writing the result as follows. The result will be one over nine into two, plus one over nine into one, plus one over nine into three, uh, plus, 1 over 9 into 1 plus 1 over 9 into 2 plus 1 over 9 into 1 plus 1 over 9 into 1 plus 1 over 9 into 0 plus 1 over 9 into 5. And if you see closely, if I just take 1 over 9 common, which is the common value, if I just take 1 over 9 common, then what will happen is I sum up all the intensity values and divide by nine, which is exactly the average of all these numbers. Um, and the result will be placed exactly at this location. So rather than actually thinking about that, um, I will go to a particular location and average them out, I can design a filter and think of this filter or this window that slides over this image. And whenever it is placed at a particular uh, location at the image, it actually, whatever the values it coincides with, the dot product is placed at the uh, required position. And this operation is called image filtering. Right now we are using an averaging filter, which actually averages out or blurs out the image. But later on we will see we can design this filter that can perform different kind of tasks. But the filtering operation stays the same. One exception is that, what if we place the filter at this location, because a lot of filter values, they will be outside the image. 
Like before, in that case, we will zero pad the image and there are other padding ways and several values of the filter, they will coincide with zero and the result can again be computed by the same way. So, um, and, and here I also mentioned that um, you need not to design a filter that performs uniform averaging. You, for example, can have a filter, an averaging filter that weights more to centering pixels and weight less to a more distant pixels. And uh, you can design a filter that actually weights more value to centering pixel and less value to the neighboring pixel. Uh, for example, maybe you can define this value to be A, uh, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and Q, where A is a large value, and B, D, G, and Q, these are smaller values, uh, smallest values, for example, uh, and E, C, F, and H, they are a little bigger values than the corner values, but smaller than A. But one property is that the sum of all these values, A, B, C, D, E, um, F, G, H, and Q, all these values, they must sum up to one because that's the property of an averaging filter. And one very common and very famous filter that can be designed in, uh, in a non-uniform way is known as Gaussian filter. That is Gaussian, Gaussian filter and is used, uh, and it's used most uh, whenever image blurring and several other tasks are carried out. Um, image blurring may, be, may, may become interesting in its own right, but sometimes it is used as uh, to reduce the noise. An assumption is that um, an image uh, when have noise can have a lot more components that will make the image non-smoother. And smoothing an image actually has an impact of uh, denoising an image. So several people, um, I mean a lot of applications like we will see uh, in the later videos, for example, edge detection and several other object detection algorithms, they may uh, involve a pre-processing step as uh, smoothing. And most of, the, most of the literature, they actually rely on Gaussian filters uh, rather than averaging filters. Although, I mean, theoretically um, or practically, basically, uh, it is not possible to actually show the importance of one filter over the other, although the Gaussian filter has a lot of good properties related to central limit theorem. Um, so it is most promising um, in, in terms of uh, theory and practice as well. So now that I have introduced the idea of uh, image filtering and the mask, in the next video, I'll be telling you a general strategy of uh, related to image filtering. So hope to see you in the next video.